So, welcome Faye to the Well Good Chat. Thank you for taking time to chat with me. Oh, hello, thanks for having me. You're welcome. Uh, did you want to, for people that don't know who you are, did you want to say who you are, what it is you do now, and potentially any other things that you've done? Yeah. Um, so, I am the founder of a business called Beauty Ball, which is a business that helps global beauty brands um, grow their sales and stockists in a number of ways. Great. So the business is in two halves now. We're a team of 13. Oh, wow. Uh, we're five years old. And there's a consultancy part where we will team up with businesses, brands, and help them in like a bespoke way. Oh, great. But then about two years ago, we launched the Brand Book, which is a global and digital trade show platform. So essentially, oh, wow. I guess put crudely, it's... Um, like a dating site, a global dating site for global retailers, global brands. So now we have people like Amazon, Liberty, QVC, Holland and Barrett, British Airways, oh um, Watsons, um, Amazon US, Zalando. Over 300 global retailers now use it to discover new brands. So yeah, the, the business isn't too hard, but they kind of complement each other now. That's amazing. So basically, instead of, say, having to go to the NEC, to a show to identify new brands and things. Yeah. They can actually do that online. That's exactly it. And wow. it came out of the pandemic because obviously doing business was transformed overnight. Yes, yeah. But also we had done so much work for brands where we were doing the physical trade shows and they're so costly. Yes. They're they are, terrible yeah. for the environment. Um they take up so much time and resource and you go there and you kind of cross your fingers and you might spend like 15, 20,000 pounds and it's like, I don't actually know who's going to come to yes. our stand. So this is that concept, but it's a year long membership, Brilliant. full visibility on who's going to be seeing the brands um, and it's working and it's growing and it's, it's, we've got an amazing team behind it. So yeah, that's beautiful that in a nutshell. And what an amazing story. And like you say, find something out of what was a challenging time and actually turn it into what it is now what what an achievement because would yeah. you would you say when you were younger could you always see yourself going into like this route no definitely not <laughs> um i when i was younger i had a, a, a long list of very varied jobs <laughs> right I'm about 11 actually which started with the paper round <laughs> yeah uh, my mum and dad ended up helping with that I was did they to, as parents normally oh, do always <laughs> um, and then when i left school i wasn't particularly I wasn't an A star A star student. I was okay. I did you know I did fine, yeah. but I never found it easy. I liked school because of the social element, yeah. and I liked things like PE and all the yeah, creative same, stuff. But same. I never really was like I want to be a doctor. I want to be a teacher. I never really had like a vision. Yeah. Um, I went to uni in Leeds, yeah. and that was again about exploring the world, making new friends. You know, just being independent and free. Yes. What and did you do at uni? Sociology. Right. So, yeah, absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I wouldn't say it's a waste because I loved it and I've got lifelong friends yes, from that definitely. time and I learned so much and it was amazing, you know. But then, following that, I stayed up for a year, went travelling around the world. Wow. When I got back, was hell bent on moving to London. So, I moved to London, slept in my friend's spare room. No way. On a mattress for a bit. Yeah, she was really kind and let me stay there for like basically <laughs> hardly any rent. That's and then amazing. yeah, and then my friend was working at QVC and she said there's some jobs. I think you should interview, so I did. Yeah. Um and I got the job and it was a really junior level, the most junior job yeah. in the sales arena for QVC. Yeah. And it was kind of there that my passion, love for the beauty industry, beauty brands, beauty founders grew because right. I was obviously working with lots of different businesses. Yeah. Um but essentially like the beauty and the fashion kind of brand spoke to me a lot yes. more but I went in at a Julia level and then within about, eight, within about 18 months I managed to work my way up and then was doing some kind of senior producer sales training Amazing. and did it yeah and, and, it, and, and I loved it and I did it and so I ended up being there for six years and I wow. again met some lifelong friends there yeah learned so much I had like a good really good couple of I guess like senior people that were like mentors to me, oh, do lovely. this, don't do this, yeah. you know, and really listen to them and loved it. But then I, one day I met a gentleman called Sean Palfrey, who was the founder of Tangle Teaser, which is a great Amazing, yeah, yeah. Tangle Hairbrush brand. Yeah. What um, a gosh. Amazing. <laughs> He'd been on Dragon's Den, that had been yeah. rejected. Um, they'd said no, so he remortgaged his flat in Brixton and put it all into making the first tool that made the brushes. Wow. 
And so when I met him, he was he was on QVC, but we got on like a house on fire. Yeah. He is hilarious. He's like a the biggest ball of energy. Ideas. Oh, like, that's, you know, typical yeah. creative like, entrepreneur. Yeah. And so then they had an opening for um, a sales manager, and I went for it, and I got it. Brilliant. And everybody at QVC thought I like lost my marbles. They were like, "What are you doing? This, this is, you know, it was just a tiny brand. It yeah. was just a team of three, small wow. turnover." And I said, no, I just, I really You've love it. Feeling. I love the product, yes. I love the team, everything. So I didn't, did it, and they said to me at QVC, okay, well, look, we're going to keep your job open because we think like this is <laughs> You're going to be back. <laughs> yeah, and I said, okay, well, thanks, but off I went. That's and amazing. Yeah, the rest is history. I was there for seven years, global sales director role, learned so much, saw so much, yeah. like, learned, did great things, made mistakes, but learned from them. Yes. It was just... Yeah. A really amazing job, and I grew professionally and personally. I think Brilliant. in that role. Uh, from there, I then worked for a private equity house in London, and yeah. um, they acquired some beauty brands. So again, I was in a global sales director role. But it was then that I got um, a health diagnosis, which I was told that I couldn't potentially have my own children. Oh right! So literally overnight, it was like right. I had this career. It was like going from strength to strength. Um, I worked in a big beauty retailer, I worked with a big beauty brand, now I was with a big beauty private equity house, and it was like tick, tick, tick. And then all of a sudden I was like, I don't think, it was, wasn't possible for me if I wanted to try the route of treatment to um, have, do that and have like yeah. a full on, full time job where you travel and have yes. to be in a board meeting on nine on yeah. Monday morning. Yeah. So yeah, so then I had to kind of take a step back and think, right, what can I do? And then Beauty Ball yes. was born, honestly, out of a place of desperation. Oh, because I I needed to work. I yes. needed to earn money. It's giving me goosebumps. But you just, I was like, right, what can I do? What What can I do that's flexible where I can be my own kind of boss in terms of yeah. time locations? Yes. Couldn't work full time. It was kind of like three days a week. So Beauty Ball was born, and luckily. You know the concept of helping beauty brands, which I've yeah, done, yes. get into retailers, global retailers, and grow their sales and stockists in various ways. It, yeah. it, it, it was it was you know needed I yeah. think, in the UK market. So Definitely. yeah, that's how it was born. And then we started to grow a team, and it started to snowball. Wow! And we were just I think really fortunate. We had some great support from the beauty industry, people you know in our network and stuff. Yes. And so our lovely team was like building the business. And then the pandemic, well actually no, I should tell you that the good news is I actually managed to get pregnant through the fertility Oh, amazing, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously I have, yeah. so I have three and a half year old Which is now. amazing, yes. amazing. Um, which was, you know, it was, yeah, it was tough but it was worth it. Yeah. And, but then when I was on maternity leave, it kind of all was up in the air again because the business that had grown so much over the previous three years was now like, doing that and then did that overnight when the pandemic yes. hit. Yeah. So that's when we launched the brand book. Yes. And now we're looking at the two parts of the business that work really well together, but yes. that's kind of how it all came about. I was on maternity leave, I was like, shit, what are we going to do? do? Yes. We can't just let this go. And yeah. it's, you know, it was again like taking what we did, putting it onto a digital platform, and now we give brands the two options as a more affordable long term or yeah. like the more intensive like you know, slightly more investment yes, yeah. type piece. So that's yeah. amazing because I suppose it. it also shows that the beauty of actually reflecting, assessing, keeping on assessing the situation because again, if you'd have been on maternity, recognised that it was starting to plummet one side and you hadn't then looked at doing the brand book, you could have just kept going down. Whereas assessing and reflecting and yeah. keep thinking, okay, what can we do to pull it back round? is a great thing to, to be able to do. Yeah, and I think we, we kind of toyed with the idea of a digital platform, but we didn't really know how it was going to look or be shaped. Yes. And I think just having the time in lockdown, I mean, I didn't obviously have loads of free yes. time, but yeah. you know, when you like stood in the queue yes. for groceries for like yeah. two hours, yes. <laughs> during lockdown, like, yeah. I'd be making notes, and yeah. I'd be like ringing the, t like, the team saying, what do you think to this, what do you think to this, and they'd be wow. going, I love it, what about this? And so wow. it just kind of happened, and. You know, we were working some night times and we yeah. were working just in an ad hoc way until we got it to where it wanted to be. Yeah. But that is how this came about. Like, yeah. I probably would still be in a full time role for wow. private equity or a brand or something like that had, yes. had that path, had my path not changed. Yes, I think. that is amazing. And if you, if we go back as if to the beginning to 
kind of when you said like you had your paper round at 11 and yeah. kind of your different jobs would you what type of child would you say you were what kind of personality um, were you I think I would say or my mum would say probably that I was very talkative yeah high energy yeah. uh very independent so you know just had that I think in me from quite a young age probably yeah um a very sociable I loved people I loved yes. being with people learning from people yeah um and so yeah that's what I probably would say but again wasn't particularly academic yeah but there was you know, like uh, this independence, and I remember, like, I know everyone's probably done this, but we used to, as kids on the street where we lived, yeah. we used to, like, pick flowers out of people's gardens and then, like, try and send it back <laughs> to them. I mean, <laughs> so, you know, all of that kind oh, of stuff. Did. Yeah. And then I had, like, loads of funny jobs, like, um, paper round, pot washer. Then I remember I was at pot washer at Duffcliffe down the road. Yes. And I got promoted yes. to glass cleaner, and I was over the moon. <laughs> I was over the moon. Oh, and that's so crisp. cute. And I was that like, oh, so I made it. Oh, bless. Um, so I did that. And so then from then, I just think I had this, I, I'm from a very hardworking family where we were always taught, if you want something, if you want those new trainers, yeah. and you want to go to that place, and you're going to have to like earn it and yeah. pay for it because yeah. it just wasn't bag of cash. No, that yeah, 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 definitely. And my parents and all my family actually were really hardworking. So that was, I think, instilled in me. Yeah. So from there, I became a waitress. And I used to love it, like you would get that brown envelope, your wage on yeah, Friday, yes, yeah. like 50 pound yeah. cash or whatever cash it was. Cash in a brown little envelope. And yeah. that to me was like total independence. Yeah. Like I can buy what I want, what I can go want. out with my friend, I can get the bus to yeah. town and <laughs> yes. go and get that McDonald's yeah. and the CD, or, you know, all yes. those little things. Yeah. And I think I just got a real like thirst for it, like I can I can earn, I can do, I can do it. Yes, yeah. Um and then so now I went on to the work at Sainsbury's and then I was at uni, I'd, I'd bar, yeah. I've been a waitress, I mean, all over. And yes. but I love, I, I, yeah. By the way, waitressing is like one of my, you know, when you have happy dreams that yes. are painted. Yeah. I'd always dream that, like, I'm walking around waitressing and that was like a oh, I love it. I always oh, loved it. Oh, that's so yeah. nice. It was obviously meant to be, like, and yeah. kind of helping and serving and making sure everyone was okay. Yeah. 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 So then, 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 obviously, from there, it was like university and then everything else that I touched on, but yeah, that's kind of how it was. And God, yeah, and, and when you then look back and you say with about like happy dreams of like waitressing and then hearing you talk about everything you've done in between and to where you are now, would you say, I know you've touched on the condition that you had with regards to the struggles with the fertility, would you say with regards to other things it's been an easy or a hard journey? Um, I think, look, on the whole, I am so lucky and grateful for the things that I've experienced in my career. Yeah. Most of all the people. Yeah. Like, some of my, all, a lot of my lifelong friends have come from, um, you know, QVC, Tangle Teaser, Blue Gem, and now Beauty Ball. Like, yes. So the people for me is like yes. a massive, huge, lovely thing that's happened. And then I think the places that I've been able to see in the world yes. and just like, the different types of roles that I've experienced yeah. and been trusted to do and yes. just been allowed to get on with it. Yeah. So I think it's been really good from that point of view. But I would say the two things that probably would have been the hardest is the fertility treatment, just because you're out of control yes. and financially, emotionally, physically, it's all like up in the air. Yeah. But I also suffered a burnout some years ago, which right. was a really hard time. And that was just me really just being ridiculous and thinking that you know working late and working 70 80 hours a week just so during certain processes where you know the businesses needed certain things it was like a badge of honor where like i do this and yeah. i'm doing the right thing and yes. i'm showing and i'm actually on reflection what i mean i learned so much yes. from both of those both of the negatives yes but um the burnout was just ridiculous and thinking back to yeah, some of the things I was doing, like eating three meals a day at my desk, working till 11 o'clock some nights, missing yeah. out on family and no. friends and things that were, are really yeah. important. And yeah. just thinking that this, you know, this role, this type, this, what, this job was just the be all and end all. And yes. it wasn't, and it never is. Yeah. And like, so I learned a huge amount. It was really, really difficult. And there was a few months where physically, I got shingles a few times. Oh, wow. and, I was really just mentally not not, yes, not, not myself, yes. not well. And yeah. so I think it just took, you have to remove the stressors when yeah. you're going through a burnout and really yeah. figure out what they all are. Yes. So and how did, what was the point? Because I think, yeah, I, I think sometimes you can be living it and you're doing it and 
weeks, months, years even can be going on. At what point did you get to where enough was enough? It was literally a split second. So I was presenting it to a really big, like in a boardroom to a large, a large number of people. Yes. Um, and I had had about four hours sleep, caffeine for breakfast. No, no. Like, and I could feel something wasn't right on the tube on the way there. And um, I was presenting, and then literally midway through the presentation, it was like my whole body just shut down and no, said, no more. No. And I just said, and I couldn't even get my words out. And it was almost like my chest felt tight. I said, excuse wow. me, I'm going to have to leave the room. I'm feeling unwell. And I, I, I'm surprised I even got out, that out. I ran to the toilet, was physically sick. No. And then from there, it was kind of like, a, I guess, a panic attack of sorts. And it's from that moment I was like, something, something really is, yes. something really just tipped over the edge yes, yeah. and isn't right. And so from there, I just started to really listen to what my body needed. And yes. I um, went to therapy. It was amazing because I couldn't see the wood no, of the trees. No. I was like being told one thing, you know, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But again, thinking I was doing the right thing. But I wasn't and I couldn't see it and so I think with like therapy and listening to friends and family yes. and really just thinking like hang on a minute having a real reset I was able to see all of the things that were absolutely ridiculous that I was doing yes. and they were ridiculous I remember being up for dinner one night and I knew that something big was going on at work and so when I was going to the toilet at dinner I was typing emails on the toilet I mean it's ridiculous isn't that is it ridiculous, yeah. and then um, my phone was never like more than you know, ten centimeters away from me, wow. and actually, but so many, but but it was hard, and I, and the therapy was great. So I realised all these things, and I really looked at. Every, I look at my life completely differently now, yes. and yeah. everything I do is like the the anti of yeah. that. So yeah. it's you know, I've got freedom. I know what I need. I'm in yes. control. Brilliant. My life is peaceful. Brilliant because of that horrible hard time. Like, really no, I did it. Yeah. Part, I'm partly to blame. Like, yes. you know, I didn't. Just, young and naive I think um, and, and you think that will make you happy I think you think this is my life this is what it's meant to be and yeah I thought that was success I thought big job title big salary you know traveling here there and everywhere being busy 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 was like success no 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 no, no, no way no. Um, success is like having control of your life being happy every day to day of course yes. no one's got it 100% I don't have it 100% but having the freedom the choice Waking Definitely. up and being like able to breathe every day yes. is like yes. just yeah. Because after that was just like a, you know I really saw everything really differently and yeah I operate in a completely different way. I don't have emails on my phone. Brilliant. Um, I don't either. No, no and I don't never will. Don't have. No. Yeah, I'm the same. Um, so if I'm at my desk, I'm at my desk. Yeah. I'm on my laptop, fine. Yeah. I am always really conscious of our team. I'm like, no one, please don't work an evening. Please never yes. work a weekend. If you're on holiday, never want yes. to hear from you. Yeah. Um, That's brilliant. Just I can't. It's just you know work when you want. Like all of these things just contribute to having like a really healthy work life balance yes, which is yes. what I have I know I'll always have that now. Yes. But also you will also now make an amazing head of the business because you'll be able to spot signs and like what you're saying with regards to if you're receiving an email at nine o'clock at night, you can then say to that individual, you're not I don't want you doing this. Yeah. It's not worth it. Like yeah. you need to kind of focus on your well-being. Exactly, but then similarly, if one of them says to me, actually, I want to be with my kids all week and actually like working a few hours a yeah. week, and like, yeah. I'm like, fill your boots, yeah. do it, like, yeah. it's absolutely fine. Yeah. But I'll never, I just think, like, yeah, that, the trust in, in that is key. And just, yeah, I just can't believe how stupid I was to let that happen. Oh, but, but there's but a positive. There's loads of positives. Brilliant. And yeah. with regards, I know you mentioned and you touched on how um, brilliant therapy was and family yeah. and friends. And I suppose looking back through all of your, your history and your journey, are there other things that you do? You touched on it as well with regards to the practicing of gratitude and kind of yeah. feeling grateful for every day and living peacefully. Are there other tools or activities or things that you know puts you in a good frame of mind yes. and helps on that side of things. I mean, I have got quite a list. I actually wrote a few down because <laughs> I have to tell you, it's Friday and my brain is, my brain is like a blonde. Oh, so bless you. So I forget everything. Oh, that's fine. Days. That's fine. <laughs> um, but for me, I guess there's some obvious ones in there. So exercise, I go to the gym three days. I mean, everything I'm about to say, actually, I'm going to caveat with, 
I don't get this right every time, every yes. week. Yeah. I'm not doing Who does? I'm not doing Who does? Time, <laughs> yeah. like, oh, you know, like absolutely perfectly balanced. Yeah. Some days I'm balanced, some days I'm yeah. like in tears because I just can't, like, I just can't yes. cope with everything yeah. in a day. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I don't want to paint me out as just like, I've got everything. Oh, I don't think anyone's no. got it completely right. <laughs> but I think the basics look like exercise is key. It's not, it's not, it's no secret. I go to the gym three times a week. Yeah. Um, I started going to bedtime yoga with my mom, Brilliant. which is really nice. Bedtime yoga. So it's just a very relaxing, restorative, lovely practice with, um, and then after that you don't you switch off. You have no interaction That's with brilliant. anything, you know, TV, digital. And where do you do that? So we do that down the road in Branston, so near here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, it's my mom's friend actually. She's she's she started the class and it's incredible. So Brilliant. there's that um, supplementation. I'm a really big believer that with you know, putting the right things into your body. Yeah. Um, I have a B vitamin 12 injection every month. Right. I think yeah. after the burnout, I, I physically, like, I never really, there was some autoimmune issues and obviously yes. infertility, that was all kind of interlinked. Yes. So I try to look after myself from a, you know, supplementation point of view. So the, I really feel the B vitamin 12 and I yeah. have that, like a real cognitive function and just energy. Oh, right. okay. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Sleep, obviously, we all know this. I don't actually, <laughs> it's a bit of a joke. You know, it's a joke in our house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, so twins don't, they're not the greatest yeah. sleepers. So, that's that. So, I've just got to say that. Even when you've got yeah. kids, like when, when these sleep experts, which are brilliant at what they do, um, but when you've got kids, you kind of like, I would love to do everything that you've said, but when your kids are waking up in the night, and I think after the newborn stage, where you've got the adrenaline because of um, being newborn, um, but then when they get to toddler years, it, I find it so much harder if they're waking yeah. up in the night. I might, yeah, I might wake each other up, so then you're like, oh God, you're like, here we are. But I don't want to moan because they're amazing, but yeah, this, I'm not going to lie and say I'm like getting nine hours sleep a night because yeah. I'm not, but I try. Yes. I really try. Yeah. And I yeah. go to bed early. 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 I'm yeah. Trying. yeah. Um, I also do, and this has been a theme actually, I think this is something that you can probably do as you get a bit older because I didn't have the funds to do this when I was like 18. But yes. I love holistic therapies. So yes. I love. Yeah. Um, acupuncture yeah. I love Reiki my body Reiki, responds yes. really well like, yeah. I feel so much more focused after I've had that like yeah. realignment yeah meditation um and I think how I talk to myself now whereas how I talk to myself some years back is very yes. different so I try and be a bit more like self-compassionate rather than self-critical I think yes. women I think women yes. tend to be a lot more self-critical yeah um it's just my experience from talking to people like you know people that I talk to like you know some women we have doubts we question ourselves whereas I just don't think men tend to do that quite as much I'm not sure certainly not in the same so so as I'm in yeah um so I think that's really important and I think for me music and dance and this might sound ridiculous but I can Put music on, yeah. and it can change. You might it can change me instantly, and I will be. De and I, we'll ha we'll regularly have music on in the morning with breakfast, yes. and it might be oh, my mama, yes. but it might yeah. not be my mama. You know, it could yes. be anything that's uplifting, yeah. uplifting. Yeah, and it just that that it just so starts the mood. Yeah, it starts the day off, and it and it works. And like today, it's fine. So my first thing would be go home, sit in the garden, and there'll be music on, and it yes. just can shift. Yeah, like when you're not, you know, because not every day you're not waking up feeling like you know. Sing, you're singing from the rooftops. There are yeah. days where it's good, it's bad, yeah. it's ugly. So I think dance and music for me is really important with those. Um, yeah. Again, like therapy, off and on. Yeah. Um, having having that to kind of fall back on. I, I'm not in therapy every month, but if there's ever tough times, I'm yes. not scared to go back and yes. you know, lean on that again. Yes. Um, and I think for me, it's people, like yeah. the people that I surround myself with. So my inner circle, I get yeah. a lot of joy and advice. And I think your closest people can tell you straight. Yeah, so definitely. Like, that is so yeah. important. Um, so important. So I think, yeah, that gives me like energy, but also you can share ideas and it can be, that's good, that's bad, that's terrible. Yes. Or I'm thinking of doing this and I'm like, oh my God, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. you, like, you, like, yeah. or what, you know, even if they see me, I don't know, like my mum, if I'm overdoing it, she'd be like, what are you doing? Why yes. are you doing it? Yeah. So I think yeah. just be, making sure you're spending time and being authentic and just, yeah, your inner circle, I think, is so important. Definitely, um, definitely. And I think just for me, like, I'm not religious, yeah. but I do have faith that there yes. is, um, some, the universe is 
it's got our back a bit. Yes. And that there, yeah. Is, yeah, there is something guiding us. I don't know what it is, I, but I am quite spiritual. Yes. I don't know how I would label that, yeah. but I do trust that, you know, through the hard times bring, yeah. like there's some great things there's that we've learned to those struggles. It, yeah. And that, you know, just little things that happen, little signs here and there. I'm like, yes. okay, so stop, stop, something's, something's looking after you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm exactly the same. And I don't know if the word you used is the word with regards to just being spiritual over kind of uh, religious yeah. and, but, and I suppose it's that feeling as though there's something greater than you and when you feel as though you've got that power of something else yeah. that's guiding you or protecting you and I think it's whatever brings you peace and, and if that whether it's through religion or whatever it is um, it's if you if it helps you yeah. live a better life Sensitive, feel yeah. yeah feel and I think with regards to like what you were saying with regards to the different things and um, it made me smile when you said um, it's not like every morning you you wake up singing from the rooftops and things and because I think that's where I think sometimes people and social media is a pain oh, for this absolutely because you can look and see and people think like I get comments with regards to oh you're always smiling you're always happy you're always this. I, I wish I was born that way and I'm like no I'm not born this way like it's just I make a conscious effort that every time I, I wake up in the morning the first thing I say is thank you for giving me another day That's lovely, because yeah. no, it's not guaranteed and no. if you wake up feeling thankful and I think okay please let today be a good day and then at the end of the day even if I thought even if I think I've had a really bad day um, I tend to do journaling and write down yeah. And I always make sure I focus on three good things that, that have happened. Yeah. And even if it's the fact that I've been able to eat, I've been able to see family or yeah. friends. Yeah. So no matter how bad a day is, and I think when you talk about all the great stuff that you do for your own mindset and when you, you have challenging times and the fact that doing those things mean that you're being proactive for when certain more, kind of, I suppose, serious life challenges happen, you're proactive and ready for it. But it's the times when you are struggling where you've probably not got the motivation to want to do those things yeah. and you don't want to turn the music on because no. you're like, I don't feel like it today. But when you do, the days that you do do it are the days that you kind of need it most. Yeah, and I think just whatever it is, whether it's how you're feeling, you're struggling at work, struggling at school, struggling whatever situation you're in, just do something. It doesn't have to be, you don't yeah. have to take the whole list. Yeah. Just do something. something yeah. The tiny step forward is forward. Brilliant. Yeah, that's uh, great. And yeah, there are some days where I'm like, I'm absolutely yeah. exhausted. I cannot be honest with any yeah. of this stuff. But yeah. just doing something, I think that it's like, okay. And you, like you say, you go to bed and you practice your, your gratitude. And I think that's another really good practice. But I think the point you make about social media is so important. And I think. I, it terrifies me for Edie and yes. Jerry, my children, yes. because yeah. there's so much risk involved and unknown and bullying and just critique and like keeping up with the Joneses. And yes. I, I do think there's an amazing side to social media, of course. Like you can learn things, you can new places that you want to visit, new hobbies that you might want to take up. You see, yeah. new music or um, you know, when I was going through the fertility stuff, there was a massive IVF community on there. Yes. I learned so much. So yeah. it was like a lifeline. It was amazing. Yeah. But I think. For me, and I'm guilty of this, I think Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, apart from Twitter, everyone moans a lot on Twitter, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's a promotional tool. Yes. It is there to drive promotion and yeah. do a marketing activity yeah. at its core. Yeah. And I think that's what I will teach my children is that it's not real. Yes. It's promotion. We're yes. all guilty of it. You yeah. know, businesses are promoting what they're doing. People are promoting themselves. So, and yeah. I'm, and I'm, don't get me wrong, I love to yeah. see it. I love it when... I see my friends from uni, kids who I haven't seen for such a long time yeah. when they're on holiday or what they've achieved or that someone's gone and had an amazing like honeymoon or whatever. Yes. I yeah. love, yeah. I, look, I get joy out of seeing, you know, I'm like, oh, so where have I gone on holiday? Yeah. Like, where yes. can I go next? Yeah. But, so there's a really great side to it, but I think what I will try and teach Edie and Joey is that it's a promotional tool. It's the best version of everything that you're seeing. Yes. It's not a real version. Yeah. Be yeah. real with your inner circle. Yes. Always be your authentic self. Don't hide Brilliant. it. Yeah. But I just think that is that message is key. I just don't know if that's talked about or not. Everybody, there's some people that are doing the opposite, which is amazing. But I'm just not good at that. I'm not good at if, and if I'm having a shit day. Yeah. I haven't, I'm not thinking. Oh, but I think it's good that there's a mix. Yeah. I think just remember, it's a promotional tool. It's 
Brilliant. Important. And that's, and that's uh, I think, um, we spoke about a bit earlier with regards to that worries me with my children as well, the whole social media. And I'm similar to you, that the way that I'm going to teach it to ours is exactly the way that you've said. Um, but also there is a platform called We Are Eight, and I've only become aware of it but that is a technology platform that only focuses on positivity. I love that. And uh, and when I when I first made was made aware of it, I was like, so they basically strip out, so they don't allow the Trolling. negative and anything that's kind of um, yeah. the negative side. It's all focused on spreading positivity, empowering kind of people, and again for people to be their authentic selves and not hate, not anything like that and that's amazing that's, I'm, I'm gonna look at that I've not, I've not heard of that and i love i think it's canada that banned someone's banned tiktok yes, yeah and i and i love that these restrictions and i think having something yeah. like that to try and like overtake yeah some of these other things up they're not or making them or making facebook and instagram and some other platforms be more responsible for yeah. all the negative and the, yeah. the the bad stuff that they advertise because yeah. then the algorithm picks up that if you've looked at it for so many seconds it will then feed more negative stuff and then Terrifying. no wonder these people are staying kind of focused on the negative if the algorithm is only pushing negative stuff to them so i think like what you said education i think is is a big thing because you're not going to get away from it um but yeah amazing what i think the way you described how you're going to do it with Edie yeah. and Jerry is, is brilliant because what would what would you say if you were to be able to have um, young Faye in a teens stood in front of you? Yeah. What piece of advice would there be anything that you would say to her? Loads. That, yeah, <laughs> that you think that if you were to have heard that in your teens, it would as if taken a bit of a weight off you to see something in a different way or there's loads and I think actually if I'm completely honest I think these are things that I would say to young Faye, teenage Faye, Faye in her 20s and even Faye up until yeah. like seven or eight years ago because yeah. I don't think I mean yes I know, don't so much even like, though I think you're yeah. a different person I'm definitely you're definitely. a different person at different yeah. stages um, but there are loads I think for me something that I've learned only recently is is Everything for me, life is about energy. Yes. Everything's made up of energy. Yeah. So you give energy, things take your energy, yes. but then you also need to restore your energy and get yes. energy from things. Yeah. And if that is off balance, if you're surrounded by things that you're not happy, they're draining your energy, yeah. or you're having to go to work and you don't like it, or go to school and you don't like it, and um, that, you know, that that's taking a lot of your energy. So it has to be like almost like a pie chart is how I'm viewing it in my yes. head. Yeah. What are you giving so what do you need yeah. back how yes, do you feel right. yeah. how do you fill your cup and you can't just the give be the give give give, give or the drain yes. the drain the drain yeah and that comes down to what you read how you talk to yourself what you listen to who you spend yes. your time with yeah definitely um, and so what how do you restore energy like sleep exercise diet etc but what gives you the energy yeah. it might be dance it might be music yeah so it's about making sure that look it's not easy when you're a busy person or you've got a family or you've got responsibilities or you're caring for someone yeah you can't always do everything but i think just being really mindful each week of yeah do i really need to do yes. that one thing that's probably not for me yeah and i think that probably leads me on to something else where i would say i think knowing when to quit yes and knowing when to say no i was just about to say that's that's the most important yeah. thing it's a superpower it is a superpower definitely um and i think knowing that is actually going to make your path more fulfilling, you're going to achieve more because if you're hanging Definitely. on to situations yeah. that aren't aren't giving you what you need yeah. or helping you to grow, yeah. um, or helping you to succeed, then you're that's actively putting up a barrier yeah. for the things that are waiting for you at the, yes, other, at the other end of that, um, at the other end, end of that. And I think so yeah, saying no. Just I always now look at my diary every week and I'm like, hang on a minute, I've said yes to way too much. And this is a very recent thing. Yes. I mean, I'm not going to tell them what all this figures yeah. out, but I'm like, yeah. right, there's three things. That's going to be five, six hours of my time. Yeah. Let's let's spread them out. Let's do them next time. Yeah. I've got this, this, and this, and like prioritizing is key. But I think definitely the quitting thing is key. Knowing that everything has a beginning and an end. Yeah. Just knowing yeah. that. Say that to yourself. Like if you're going through a bad time. Everything has a beginning and an end in yes. life. Yeah, yeah. And failure, yeah, and failure is 
I mean, it's it's failure can lead to you to the right path. Definitely, um, definitely. That was the big one when I got told about failure. I think I can't remember. I think it was one of Aunt Middleton's books, um, and it and it was like a light bulb moment because. I think I'd had this fear of failure for a long time and oh, I can't fail or everything's got to be perfect. And then it was like, well, failure, you either succeed at what you're aiming for or you, you've learned a lesson. Yeah. And actually, that's great. So yeah. actually, failure doesn't really exist because you're either get going forward in the way you want to or you've got a lesson to learn. And yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, that's that it. is incredible to to have that knowledge, like as a young yeah. youngster, and I never, I never saw it. Not even no, recently. Like it builds, I didn't. It builds resilience. You grow from those things that didn't work out. Always. Yes. Um, Don't you think that it also makes? Because I think it also comes down to the culture within schools, yeah, workplaces. Because if they are putting, because I, I, I can remember certain pressures that the teachers would put on us, say. You've, you've got to make the right decision for your GCSEs. This is the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. That's not true. And I remember, and like looking back now, I'm like, the one thing I'd say is to say to the school children, make the decision that's right for you at this moment in time. If when you finish school, it's the, the wrong decision, change it. Like choose a different uni course or choose a different college course, do yeah. an apprenticeship. It's not the end of the world. Honestly, and this is so true. This is, what, this is what frustrates me. I'm not an expert in the education system. No, I would say that, I'm not. But <laughs> I just think there's so many different types of people and children in the world. So yeah. the set education policy is it, as it is now is no way meant for everybody. Yeah. And I think, great if you are academic, great yeah. if you do what you need to do to get to the next stage. But I also believe, and having worked with a lot of entrepreneurs, I see this, is that, okay, they didn't do well at school, but having drive, being passionate about yes, what you do, having hard, a good work ethic, yeah, brilliant. Um, and yeah, being able to see something through, and having emotional intelligence yes, actually, yeah. is actually, they're all just as important definitely. as getting you getting certain grades at school, yeah, and like definitely. I say, don't be afraid to change your mind, I mean, I'd love to know, I'd love to know what the number is of, you know, thousands of school children from however many, you know, from last year, take what they're doing now versus what they thought they were going to do yeah. 15 years ago at school. I would love to yes. know the statistics. I would put my mortgage on the fact that it is a tiny percentage. Yeah. And yeah. kids aren't taught that. Yeah, they're not. No, so I think, should, like, this is another one that I think I would say to like young people is, just trust your gut at that yes. time. And that may change. Yeah. I think as women, we have really strong intuition. Yeah. If something feels good, then do it, go it, follow, follow yeah. your heart. But if it doesn't, if it feels off, doesn't feel right then it don't usually yeah, is wrong yeah yeah and i think that's so that is so important and i was yeah with, with everything that you've said it's it's so key with regards to how you see things and again like we've said it's not even like we've known or thought this way for a long time it's even over the last couple of years that the more you read the more you listen the more you talk to people that you become aware of certain things and then you're like oh my gosh if i'd have known that and thought about that sooner yeah. like it, it would have probably taken a bit of pressure off yeah and um, i wish i'd known that yeah definitely because what would um i suppose one of the final questions would be would you say what you thought would make you happy when you were growing up to what actually makes you happy now would you say that the, the, the things that you thought would make you happy do make you happy I would say some of them, yeah, like I thought, I always in my head thought I'd have children and that would be fulfilling and I love yeah. my role as a mother, Yeah. so that, yes, but I think really what I learned from the burnout is I thought it was like money, job title, success, being this like here, there and everywhere, but actually what I get the most joy from is like adventure, yeah. so trying, seeing the world, seeing new things, yeah. like making memories with my children, like yeah. having things to look forward to yeah. and having balance, having control, freedom of my own life to make my own choices. And yes, money gives you choices, but I'm yeah. no way would, you know, cause that it, it does. Yeah. Um, but I'd say, yeah, so yes and no. I, I thought one thing and even re like even 10 years ago, I probably thought that, but I think no. Um, I Yeah, I'd say that's what makes me happy now. Yes. Is having those, you know, looking at my ear ahead and thinking, they're the lovely things that yes. I got to look forward to. Not, yeah. I love my job, I love yeah. what we do, and I do get energy from yes. my job, and I yeah. get, you know, excitement, and it's, you know, 
I'm really passionate about it. And that's part of it, but um, because I'm experiencing new things through the business. Yeah. But I would say that, and I would also say, I think one important thing, or two more important things that I probably would say is, and um, having a mentor. Yes. Even for that's a great age. one. That is a great one. Um, it might be um, it might be a professional mentor. It might be a, a personal or mentor or both. But I think even from an early age, just talking to someone or people like in the area of what you may definitely, or may not want to do and just definitely. having like an experienced pair of ears and eyes to like sense check yes. things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a great one. I have been so lucky. Yes. I, have, I have a handful and they're all brutally honest and I love it. Yeah. And like, it's a great idea. Why have you thought of that? How are you going to manage that? That's ridiculous. You can't do that because of this. And I'm like, oh my God, I've never thought of that. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. been a really, really important one actually. Yeah. Um, and then the inner circle thing again, I think that's really key. Just choose who you spend your time with wisely, your friends, yeah. your family. Um, you need love, you need support, yes. you need truth, you need encouragement. Yeah. Um, and then the last, I guess this is a, a little one, but I always tell myself in any situation, I still get terrified going into many, many situations. Yes. Normally at work. Yeah. Um, but I always say to myself, okay, what is the worst case scenario? Yeah. What is the worst that can happen yeah. if this doesn't work out? How yeah. do you think? Yeah. And if I can handle the worst case scenario, yeah. I'll do it's it. It's all right. Yeah. I say that to the kids. See, yeah. 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 yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I love it. And I love that. And I, that's something I like. I say it to myself quite a lot. Like, I'm not going and, you know, there's big meetings that I have to go to or presentations or. You know, if I do go to a trade room, I have to talk to a lot of people. I yes. find that terrifying, yeah. absolutely terrifying. Yeah. So I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? I, you know, this, you know, yeah. and, then, and then I just process it, and I'm like, okay, I'll do I it. can deal with that. Yeah, so that's the thing I would say. Yeah, that's a, that is so amazing, and everything that you've said, I think so many young people, I think adults, I think parents, carers, lecturers, I think will be able to take so much of what you've said and. Put and relate to it or then put certain things in practice or I think even hearing you talk about your journey even might make some people realise that they might be in some of those situations and not actually realised it until somebody's obviously spoken about yeah. it so all I can say is thank you so much oh, for thank joining you. Thanks for the good Chat. I also absolutely love what you're doing. Oh, thank so, you. So thank important you. and so clever and so needed. So oh, thanks for letting me like, be part of it. I think it's amazing what you're doing. Congratulations. Oh, oh, that's so kind. Thank you so much. And we wish you all the best for Beauty Ball thanks. and uh, the rest of the year. Thank you. Thanks you're so welcome. much.